What? Egypt is still part of the Orient, isn't it? There's a story behind this one. Not a childhood one, but a recent one. I found this game while looking for Ports of Ishido. A big thanks to home.halden.net for that, by the way, and I apologize for not giving the hat tip earlier. A listing at the end caught my eye. Pyramid, made in 1996. This looked different. This didn't look like an Ishido board at all. In fact, it isn't. The design is based off a two-player board game of the same name made by Ken Totten, the same designer, and published by Tau Ten Games in 1982. So it actually predates Ishido, and because I am the way I am, this fascinated me to no end. Loading up Pyramid, alas, the game is unregistered, and no databases I had contained a trace of serial number or crack for this game, and even looking up the system it used to use really gave me nothing. I could have reviewed it as is, and the messages Pyramid gives when the game it isn't registered are entertaining, but I don't like to review only part of a game. Over on the garden it looked like someone, open source Mac, was trying to crack it already, and I was even digging around with Mac's bug trying to find something. After a lot of discussion, Mike TomTom Tom came along and found a special registered version on Software Showcase 240 from the Software of the Month Club, a subscription-based software delivery service that started in 1979 out of Los Angeles, California, and seems to have lasted about 20 years. In this case, a godsend for archival. Then my supposed CD copy of Pyramid came in the mail, which was, in fact, a copy of Software Showcase 240. So, at least we would have gotten our hands on this thing one way or another. Although, if anyone has any more of these CDs lying around, just saying, there could be a treasure trove of software on these for Mac and Windows alike. Yes, this includes Pyramid, but it's old enough you're likely to need an older machine to run it anyways. Didn't work on my Windows 10 PC. With that prelude out of the way, this is Pyramid, designed by Ken Totten and programmed by Chad Evans. I'm not even making fun of that name, it's an amazing name. They sound like an 80s or 90s action hero. Follow the high stakes action in Egypt with our hero, Chad Evans, in Pyramid, coming to theaters. Never. The pair made two games, Pyramid and Henge, the Celtic Game of Stones, under the name Magic Castle, which I really need to be careful about how I pronounce. By the way, if anyone knows a registration code for Henge or can figure out how to crack it, hit me up and I'll take a look at that one too. Anyhow, Pyramid is actually pretty simple to start with, and the game comes with a nice graphical guide, and following in Ishido's footsteps, sets this up as a game found in an ancient Egyptian tomb somewhere. Not quite the extensive read that Ishido's story was, but still a nice touch nonetheless. Not to mention, it comes with the game program, so you don't have to dig on the internet or own the collector's edition to read it, so good on them. Basically, you have to stack these blocks together to build up a pyramid. Every block you place has to match any other blocks already next to it on the board. On the easier Game of the Nile setting, there's four colors, and they're all done by exact match. On Game of Pharaoh, there's a range of colors, and each matches that color, or the ones next to it. And of course there's the rare wild spaces, which match with anything. There's not as many restrictions as Ishido. You don't have to start from the center, though it's recommended, and you don't have to connect directly to another stone, though once again recommended. You have to match every symbol currently in place, after all. The corners are easiest in this regard, so generally save for last. Of course, sometimes you don't have much choice, especially before you complete the first level of the pyramid. You see, as you complete each layer, you get more stones to work with. The system feels a little bit strange, though it can make it satisfying to finally finish that foundation. It also means that as you have less spaces, you have more stones, so luck is a bit less involved than getting one stone at a time the whole way through. Though, sometimes you just don't get the right stones to finish up that peak no matter what you do. Sometimes you just can't finish off that corner or edge and get stuck. Sometimes, as the guide says, it's just not in the stones. Still, it's simple enough that it can have that one more game feel to it, and this is driven on by your sometimes encouraging, sometimes not, local god of death over there. Hi Anubis. Be glad internet image boards weren't rampant when this was made. Y'all are gross. Ra, you're lucky too. Even though I don't see you nearly as often. He doesn't have nearly as much to say either, so moving on. You win! 
Anubis here has some encouraging lines if you're close. That. Was. Bad. Luck. Some more neutral, sometimes sarcastic lines when you're not. If. You. Win. You. Will. Not. Lose. Some downright mocking lines when you're really not. You. Lose. Again. You. Can. Win. But. Not. Like. That. You. Win. Really? Not. Oh, man. Now that I think about it, the voice sounds familiar somehow. I'm an idol worshipped by many. Now I see how the game is meant to be laid out. The bigger boards are harder, of course, and the game of the Nile is meant to be the easy setting, while the game of Pharaoh is meant to be the hard setting. Game of the Nile is certainly easier to learn, but I'm not sure if it's easier to complete or not. Now hear me out on this one. Warning, in the words of Michael Reeves, we're about to start talking about some nerd stuff. Kind of. I'm not going to use technical terms, but more of a layman analysis, because when it comes to puzzles and game theory, I'm a mere novice, which will become quite apparent later in this series. Now, I'm not sure what the probabilities are with the stones in this game, but I do know enough. Each space is going to have a different color, no matter what. On Game of the Nile, there's four colors, so that means four options. Each piece is very, very inflexible with where you can place it, so unless you get some wilds in there, you'll need very specific piece layouts to fit everything together perfectly. The Game of Pharaoh has eight colors that can show up, but each color can match with both itself and the colors next to it. This means inward corners don't need the exact same color, though it is better, and if you end up with opposing outside corners having the same or similar colors, you still have some chance to get a normal piece that will fit. On Game of the Nile, if you hit one of these situations, you need something with wilds. If you hit both, you need the Super Rare Master Stone to save you, as the two wilds and the more common Semi Master Stones only appear in opposite corners. So I'm under the impression that while Nile is more approachable, Pharaoh is more flexible. Which is probably why the only slightly hidden Game of the Gods mode, which eliminates Master Symbols entirely, is played with the game of Pharaoh's colors. Speaking of, the graphical design of the game is top-notch for being designed by exactly one guy. Said hidden mode pulses once you complete a game on the Pharaoh mode, though you can certainly access it beforehand. As you build your pyramid, any symbols that aren't important anymore disappear, blending into the structure of the... um... structure. The edges and corners smooth out into the triangular shape of the pyramid as they're surrounded and fully used. The pieces mesh together so that the thicker lines form the layout for the next level of pieces to go on. Each color has a theme so that, in theory, even if you're colorblind, you can still play this. Though, if you're like me, I see all the colors and still sometimes don't even remember what goes with what. But I'm only a hobbyist in a vast world of puzzles. What I'm saying is that I really love the look of the game, both from an artistic standpoint and a game design standpoint. No complaints at all. That even extends to the website, which looks very pretty, at least graphically. From a web design standpoint, it's a bit confusing, but that's the 90s for you. Thanks, Internet Archive. I will say, it's not easy. I've beat most of the difficulties, but building the Pyramid of Khufu on Game of the Nile took over four hours of attempts for me. Yes, the pyramids have names too. The Pyramids of Menkere, Khafre, and Khufu, which I hope I'm pronouncing correctly, but I'm probably not. If my review of Dubal Morale is any indication, my best pronunciations are done on accident. But, moving on. It is a nice theme, increasingly senior pharaohs of Old Kingdom Egypt, specifically the Fourth Dynasty. There's the occasional script bug being made in Macromedia Director, but nothing game-breaking, and there's not really anything else to complain about. Well, scratch that, I have one thing. There's no profiles, no stats, not even any indicator of what you've completed, which I think is a bit of a glaring omission for a computer puzzle game. I know it saves settings somewhere, the size, difficulty, and other settings carry, so why not keep track of your wins, losses, streaks, that sort of thing for each combination of size and difficulty. Ah well, maybe best I don't know what my losing streak is, like I'm playing Acid Solitaire on my Palm Pilot again, looking at my 10 plus game loss streak. But how else am I going to brag I beat the Game of the Gods before this age of high bandwidth and massive data storage? Well, on the smallest size, but shut up. Still, that's really the only major complaint I have about it. 
Yes, there's a little bit of luck involved, but if things like Hounds and Jackals, Mehen, or Senate, which I once again hope I'm pronouncing right, are any indication, the games of Ancient Egypt were all games with a little bit of luck sprinkled into them. Not like the completely equitable layouts of games like Chess, Othello, or Go. So, honestly, that fits perfectly with the theme of the game. If you like puzzle games, definitely give this one a try. It'll work on any old Mac, real or emulated, as long as it supports color and has a few megs of RAM, at least as far as I know, and the Windows version likely works on a wide range of old computers too. Speaking of Othello and Go, guess what we're going to be talking about next? Till next time! Bye.